Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Karen Shannon, and I'm a member of the Coda Bears team. Today, we're going to be taking a look at updatable BAQs. So, what are updatable BAQs, you may ask? Updatable BAQs, or business activity queries, are queries that include tables and fields, which normally are read only, but include one or more fields usually only a few that are updatable. I will be covering just a couple of basic examples, although more complicated tasks can be accomplished, I will only be presenting a basic overview. Some of the benefits of updatable BAQs are that you can update many records at one time in a list view if you would like, and you can also choose to add new records using an updatable BAQ. So let's get started learning about updatable BAQs. These are the basic steps you're going to perform to start using updatable BAQs. Here's an outline of the presentation that I'll be doing today, and the following slides will cover each topic in more detail. Most anything you do to change the way Epicor works should start with a well thought out plan. So hopefully you can get your desired results the first time. So plan your design of your updatable BAQ. Once your plan is in place, you start designing your BAQ. The next step is to make your query updatable. And then you will be testing your updatable BAQ in the BAQ Analyze tab in the BAQ Query Designer before moving the updatable BAQ to a dashboard. Once you place your query on a dashboard, you should again test before publishing your dashboard. You may get started with one easy updatable BAQ and find it so useful that you want to think of many more updatable BAQs to make your company operate more efficiently. After we review the following slides, we will take a look at a couple of examples in action as time permits. So this slide shows an example of some planning you might do for your updatable BAQs. The top area shows a plan for a, an updatable BAQ to update tracking numbers on your daily shipments, for example. Here we list all the fields that we want to see and highlighted in yellow the field that we want to be updated. And then we also list the BAQ name we're going to use and the dashboard name that we're going to use. If we want to include any selection criteria in our BAQ, we can also include that. For example, we included a prompt for a ship date greater than or equal to and a prompt for a ship via, which can also be blank to return all ship vias. The second example in the lower portion of the screen shows an example of an updatable BAQ and the results that we would like to see for adding a new customer record. Here again we show that all of the fields are going to be updatable except for the last column which is the customer number. Again we show what we plan to name our updatable BAQ and what we name plan to name our dashboard. It's good to include examples of actual data in your plan so that if the IT person you're requesting this design from does not know exactly all the fields that you need, if they have an example data they might be able to find what you're looking for. So as mentioned we start with a BAQ, a business activity query. You should begin by designing a normal BAQ with the fields, layouts, sorts, parameters, criteria, etc. that you need for your BAQ to return the results that include the fields you want to see and the fields that you want to update. Here we are including the required fields for a new customer required by Epicor and or required by our company. You analyze and test this query just as you would any other query and then save your changes once you are happy. Your BAQ may include more than just a simple list and also may include additional calculations, etc. 
which is why it's important to test your BAQ before making it an updatable query to make sure all these calculations etc work as you expect them to. Once you have designed the basic format of your query you now need to change your BAQ to be updatable. There's a few required steps to change it to be updatable query. First you need to select the updatable checkbox on the general tab for your query. Next go to the update tab and the update processing sub tab and select a business object and method to use for updating the data in your query. The information in the bottom grid will fill in automatically as long as you have at least chosen the Epicor required fields. If the values do not fill in automatically you can also update the bottom grid as needed. You'll also need to go to the update tab and the general properties tab and select what type of updates you want for your updatable query. In this case we want to add new records and all of our fields will be updatable except for the custom. No. Epicor will let you define this field as updatable, but since it is a key field, it gives errors when you try to update and does not really update this field anyway. You can also choose to allow multiple row updates. We will show that example in the tracking number updatable query. So we need to test your updatable BAQ once you have everything in place by using the BAQ Analyze tab. In this example, we're testing the tracking numbers B updatable BAQ. So you'll go to the Analyze tab, and most of the time you may want to limit the number of rows to return, especially if you know you're working with a large file, or if you are unsure if you're working with a large file. Next, you'll click the Get List button for an updatable query to return a list of records that meet the criteria and prompts that you define. Once the list is shown, as in the right picture, you will double click a row to be able to update a value. So I double click the first row and then I'm able to type in the tracking number 123 in the prompt for the update. And then I click OK. After you update enter the updated value, the value will be shown in the grid, but it's not really updated at this time. You can continue to select additional rows and update the values in those rows, which will then display on screen, but the rows will not be updated until you click the update button and answer yes to the warning that you are going to change and update database information. You can again verify your updated data by clicking the Get List button after you did the Update button. So next you test your BAQ as an updatable dashboard. Before deploying your dashboard by using the Test option. The steps will be similar to those in the BAQ testing. First you click Refresh which will bring up prompts for the criteria similar to the get list option in the BAQ testing and then after you have the list you can update each row by tabbing to the only field that's un enabled as updatable. You can update more than one record if you check the box in the BAQ to allow multiple rows update. After you have entered values in all or only those that you want to update click the save button similar to using the update button in the BAQ testing and then click the refresh button to see your results updated if you wish. So we gave a couple of basic examples for using updatable BAQs and we listed a few more here that are some that you can create on your own if you'd like. Updating min, max, and safety values in your parts records. If a different buyer now purchases for a group of parts, you can also update the buyer name in the parts records. If your parts have changed to a different product group, you can use an updatable BAQ to make those changes if you wish. You might also consider doing an updatable BAQ if you need to change 
orders the need by dates and ship by dates either at the order header level or the order line level or the order release level. Another suggestion that was brought up when the live demo of this presentation was was an example to use an updatable BAQ when a, an employee left the company to be able to change all the BAQs that he worked on to a new author who will be able to then change those BAQs as needed. So just think about any other examples that you might come up with that would be useful to your company. So now we'll be taking a closer look and reviewing these two examples in Epicor 10.1. We'll review both the examples as time permits. So first we'll take a look at the updating freight tracking numbers and we'll look at the query itself that we have. You know, just basically one table with the criteria we define that the company is equal to the current company and the ship status is equal to shipped. And then we have parameters for the ship date greater than or equal to a ship date parameter and the ship via code equals a ship via code parameter. We're just displaying a few fields in our query. Basically we want to know the pack number and ship date and ship via codes and we want to update the tracking number. Next we'll look at the update tab and the update processing first. Here's where you'll pick the business object that you're going to use to update your query. In this case we're looking at the business object of customer ship and the update method of the update extended method. The bottom area will normally fill out as needed on its own but you also can update those values if needed and there's also a second tab available down there. When we get to the general properties here's where you basically tell it what you want to be updatable. If you would like to allow new records or if you would like to allow multiple rows updated. So in this case we checked allow multiple rows to be updated and then we only have the tracking number field as updatable. The rest of the fields are just either required or or listed. So we'll go to the Analyze tab and go ahead and test our um, query. So we can click on rows to return if we'd like. In this case I know there's going to be less than 100 but we'll do it anyway. And then we'll click our Get List and it's going to warn you that you're going to update data in your database and we're going to you know want everything that's has a ship date greater than this date and all of our ship vias so I'm not entering a value in the ship via. So here are our results that we have from our query showing the ship dates greater than the date we chose and then all ship vias. We do already have tracking numbers in here from the last demonstration, but we can update those. So to update them, we will double click on the row as mentioned in the uh, presentation, and we can update the value. So as mentioned also, this is only updated in the grid and will not update until we press the update button. If we press get list again we'll see it's just going to be back to where it was. So we have to not only update the value but say to update. And as we mentioned we can do multiple rows. And now if we say update we'll get the warning again and yes we want to continue and it really will be updated and we can go ahead and get list to verify the values are really updated. Now we'll look at that same example in a dashboard. So we attach that query to our dashboard and we'll go to deploy our dashboard but before we deploy it we want to test the dashboard. So again you'll click your refresh button 
to get your prompts to come up and choose your uh, date that you would like and your ship via code or leave it blank for all of them and you'll see same data we saw in the BAQ but we can also update it and it's hard to see but the tracking number is the only field with a white background and the other four fields have a light gray background. So similar to the BAQ testing in the dashboard testing even though we typed in these values they won't really be updated until we click the save button and we can do the refresh to verify that our values were updated. Now we'll take a look at the customer updatable dashboard. We can bypass the BAQ because you know how to test it in BAQ but we'll be testing it in the dashboard. Go to tools Again, deploy dashboard, test the application, and refresh your screen, and you will get a list of all the customers that are already in the system. And you can see some towards the end that we did as demos in the past. So in order to add a new one, you just say new, and then you can start typing in the information for your new customer. And you'll notice we have highlighted in purple the required fields from Epicor, but we also need to enter other fields that are required by our, our company. And as mentioned, the customer, we will not be updating this last field because it will not be able to be updated. It is automatically assigned. So we'll click save to actually save the data in the dashboard and we can see it was assigned the next numerical number and if we click refresh we will see that our customer is actually part of the database now. So updating, updating, updating. Epicor does not want you to do so without using the tools they provide. So do not update directly in SQL. Instead, use updatable BAQs or the DMT tool if you own it also. See what queries you can create in your test, training, or pilot environments and prove they work as you expect before moving them to live. Thank you for viewing this presentation and look for many other topics provided by Coda Bears on our YouTube channel.